What's going on Server Squad? It's been a while, but we're back today with another build guide. And, of course, it's sunny again in the lovely wastelands. This time, we're going to be coming out with a rocket launcher guide. If that sounds like it interests you, then stay tuned. That's coming up next. As always guys and girls, if you're not part of the Sofa Squad and you'd like to be for all things Xbox and soon Xbox Series X, why not hit that subscribe and bell icon and I will bring you regular content, hints, tips, builds, guides and some fun gameplay. But for now, let's get on with the build. Now this character has got a completely, completely odd build style compared to what you're used to having. But bear with him, he does work really well. And I would say, try and have a little look at the end, at the gameplay footage, to see if it suits your playstyle, because I think this character is really, really good in this game. Now, as you can see here, a little oddly, he's not wearing any clothes. Well, he is, but he isn't wearing any equipment. And that's because he actually has the perk, Death Wish, which gives you free AP, but basically means you will not be allowed to use clothes as such. In most cases, this is not a very good idea, but with this build, it really does work. So what you want to do, nice and easy, chuck on something that gives him an extra action point. Whatever you want to give him, I find due to the fact that this character will be getting the crit damage anyway, because he's guaranteed crit, just give him an anabolic injector. One of the reasons I really like this build, it's very easy to do. It's very achievable. It is very damaging, it's very fun, and one other really good thing, it means that you can kind of use your really, really good stuff, so mods and armor pieces, on other characters. Now, as you can see here, he's using the Javelin and the Nukazooka. Now, if you look at these, you're probably thinking the damage could be a little bit higher, and you're right. If I change the quirk to something else, I could get an extra, I believe it's 35%, might be 30, I can't actually remember off the top of my head now, but you get an extra bit of damage. I believe it brings the Nukazooka up to about 1500, and this one over 400 itself. So it is definitely good. But there's a reason why we're doing it this way. Now, what you want to do is coordination, you'll want all the way max. This build is about getting as much AP as possible. Luck, try and put up as high as possible. This is a really good stat on this build. Awareness needs to be maxed out. Intelligence, again, the crit chance does not matter, but you do want that extra crit damage. So chuck up your intelligence as high as possible. This will make this build really, really good. If you don't one-shot something, it will still have so minimal health that it will work hand in hand with your other characters. And just down here for the quirk, as you can see, we've got Death Wish which is really good because this build is all about getting those action points. However, it does make him extremely squishy. But if you're trying to kill everything in the first or second turn as such, this is a great build to have and it's a great quirk to have on. And just down the bottom here, a really standardized one for an explosive build is Exploder Maniac. Pretty much just gives you 15% extra explosive damage bonus. Now over here on the skills, the only ones you 100% need is explosives all the way maxed out and small arms. Small arms is very, very underused on explosive builds and I'll show you why. It's got the perk draw. In a firefight, every second matters, hit them before they know what's happened. Basically, this allows you to take a shot for free after you've reloaded, which on all weapons is amazing. On rocket launchers, it's probably the best perk you can probably get, or at least definitely top tier. Now, I've put on there mechanics, as I want it to hit a little bit harder against robots and such, because it does the job against squishies, I want it to do the job against robots as well. But if you really did want to, for an endgame build, you could take it all the way out of mechanics and put it all the way down here to sneaky stuff. And if you are going to use him as your initiator, so the person who basically starts combat and gets the extra damage, you'll want to put sneaky stuff all the way up so that you'll get lights out. 
and that way he will do ridiculous amounts of damage when he initiates with the first shot. For myself, I still believe that the shotgunner is still by far and definitely best at starting and opening combat as such. He just gets so many more kills and it doesn't cost much AP. For the perks, now this is kind of up to you. Like I said, you can definitely, with the skills, put them where you want. You have a lot of action points left. If you didn't want to put it in mechanics and you didn't want to put it in sneaky stuff, you could put it very much where you want. The only ones that are vital in this is the small arms draw, the explosives, these three here. Now, I probably won't show you Mortar Blast in this actual playstyle when I show you the footage, but if you did want to, Mortar Blast is again a top tier move and it decimates everyone. So what you can do is basically set up an error effect with your new Kazooka, which is why we've got it on, and when you when you use it, the next turn, so when the enemy moves, they will move into a blast zone and it will absolutely shred them to pieces. It is an amazing move, it doesn't cost ammo on your um, new Kazooka, so the tactical nukes as such kind of stay in your inventory, so it is really, really good. You may well use this in some missions, but for this one I'm just going to show you how I use it more often than not. And down here with the mechanics, I've got bonus damage to robots 20% and bonus damage to vehicles 20%. The build is really good. He knocks the squishies for six and it absolutely decimates robots. It is a really good overall build that is really easy to achieve. Now, if you're wondering about the playstyle, what I would say, this is from personal experience, you can change it to how you want. Obviously, if you wanted lights out, you would use him as your opener and kind of decimate the first few people that you could hit in the error effect. I don't use him. I open with my shotgunner, get a lot of kills that way, and then after that, I use this character to kind of nuke everywhere so he'll get quite a few shots off and what you'd want to do is have a leader on your team that can use rally that will give him another two ap and if you remember we've got draw so that means that when you actually reload for two points you're then or two ap sorry you're then going to be taking your next shot for free so you will be shooting rockets left right and center what you will also do if you do not kill what you're aiming for so say for example there was 20 enemies shoot the enemies that you can get the most clustered up knock down their health and then go on to the next ones and then what i would tend to do is put my um, sniper into chain ambush and they will just finish off anyone that is not already dead but yeah a shotgunner this guy and kind of a character with overwatch as such obviously a sniper kind of absolutely decimates everything. I'll show you a little bit of footage and you can decide for yourself.